that's recording. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, the webinar is recorded, which means you can uh, watch it back uh, at a later date. It also means for anyone who couldn't attend uh, live, we can send it out to them. And um, for any uh, professionals who are supporting AAC users, it's worth knowing that we have a scheme whereby you can access our communication software for free um, by signing up for a professional account. Um, so we're going to be looking at Communicator 5 today um, and we have free trials of that available for anyone for uh, 30 days via our website. But professionals, so people who are supporting AAC users, if you want to do any editing for somebody or uh, do an assessment and try it with someone, you can sign up for an account with us and have a full perpetual version of Communicator 5 for free. Um, along with our other software as well, Snap Call First. Um, so we will be sending out a follow-up email um, with uh, this presentation on and also these links on here so you can, you can uh, follow the links to sign up for your uh, pro account if you'd like one. And just to say, I think it's slightly different in the US um, in that um, you need a, is it an ASHA number, is that right? Uh, yeah, I believe so, like your speech and language therapy or uh, pathology uh, registration the R, code. The RC SLT is the, the UK body. Yeah, cheers, John. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Uh, Communicator 5. Um, just to kind of clear up where Communicator 5 is at, because uh, historically it was a piece of software that, and although it still can, um, it historically catered for um, communicators um, and clients of ours with uh, various communication ability, whether it was someone who was brand new to using AAC, who's an emerging communicator, someone who's uh, using symbols to communicate, or someone who is uh, using a keyboard, a literate text-based communicator. There are tools in there uh, that support um, all of those um, AAC users. Um, however, with um, kind of developments at Toby Dynavox, we have new products that support some of those communicators better now. So just to kind of clarify where everything's up to, for our emerging communication users, um, we tend to look more at other pieces of software, including BoardMaker uh, and an app of ours called Snapsy. Um, for anyone who's using symbols to communicate, uh, we have a, another app or AAC program available called Snap Plus Core First. So uh, any new symbol-based AAC users that we work with, we tend to look at Snap with them. Um, and for text-based communicators or, or uh, our AAC users that are literate, then Communicator 5 is the way to go and is our kind of flagship software for any AAC users that are using a keyboard, essentially. Uh, and that is what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, so just a quick overview of Communicator 5 as a piece of software. Um, it's a tool for efficient communication. So we want to uh, enable our AAC users to communicate as, as quickly, as fast, and as effortlessly as possible. Um, and John, who's on with me today, who's on the chat, has uh, already done a webinar on some of the key features that help with that. It's called Say It Quicker. So definitely worth looking at if you've not, not seen that one already. Yeah, there's another one on Wednesday. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, if you can jump on that, I'd, I'd recommend it. Um, what, like with this one, though, we've recorded it and you'll be able to watch it afterwards, if not. Um, the idea with a lot of the tools in Communicator 5 are, are there, and the ones we're going to look at today are to allow uh, users to do what they did before or what other people uh, are doing with their you know, uh, phones or tablets or, or laptops. Um, it's much more than just for face-to-face -face communication, you know, uh, text-to-speech, voice output. Um, we're going to look today at a lot of the, the more distance communication, social media, and also looking at controlling the environment. Um, it's a solution for the journey, idea being that it can kind of uh, grow with someone over time, things can be can be added to it or taken away from it. Um, it's got the ability to be personalised so that the users can make it feel their own. It's easy to use and easy to set up, hopefully you'll see that today. Um, and probably my favourite thing about Communicator 5 is, is the final point, which is that uh, it gives a high level of independence because all the key settings are in the user's hands. They have full control over everything regardless of their access method. Um, and that's the thing that we'll start on. Um, this is something that runs across all of the webinars we're going to do on Communicate 5 because it's, it's relevant to them all. Um, but 
as I say, this one's a really important one. Um, our users are in charge of their own software. Um, all the key settings are available to them, whether they're using eye gaze or, or switch or head mouse or touch. So when they turn on the device, this is what their home page would look like. So they turn on the device, uh, communicate five will open up and it looks something like this. Um, a bit like with a phone, you've got various apps on the home page, and you can see that over here, one of those apps that have been put on this home page is access to the settings. So if the user was to come in here using their access method, then from here they can change their gaze interaction settings, things like their dwell time or how they're gonna activate their eye gaze. And they can also change calibration, they can check their positioning. Um, if they're tired and they perhaps want to start looking at switching later in the day, they can quickly change their input method themselves. Um, and they can change their keyboard settings themselves as well, whether that's the layout, um, whether they're changing it because they're changing their access, um, or whether they want to change the language because they're speaking to a carer or someone else in the household who, who speaks a different language and they're bilingual. The user can do all this themselves really quickly and really easily using their own access method. Um, any questions on any of that so far, John? Nothing in the chat window. Okay, no worries. Uh, yeah, feel free, guys, if there's anything I miss or that you want to clarify, just let, let John know and we'll, we'll touch on it. Um, this is another huge feature. Um, I mentioned that the user can come into settings and choose the keyboard themselves. And um, once again, I'd recommend uh, watching John's Say It Quicker webinar because he goes into full detail about all of these keyboards that are available. Um, but the key point I want to touch on is that the change that the user makes in the settings is universal. So when uh, they change the keyboard layout, that layout applies to every app, every page set we call them, um, every tool that they're going to need in Communicator they just make the change once and it applies everywhere, um, which is important to the stuff we're gonna look at because whether you send in a text or an email or searching the web or going on YouTube, um, you're gonna need a keyboard for doing all those things. And you don't wanna have to change your keyboard in every single uh, tool that you're gonna access. So by just changing it once in the settings, um, it's a nice, easy change that you can make um, yourself. So you can choose a keyboard that works for you. Um, We've got large key keyboards. We've got layouts for various access methods that make them uh, more efficient for say a head mouse user or a switch user. Um, you can change keyboard prediction languages. You make the change once, including changes to your settings. So things like dwell times um, and speech history recording are changed once in your setting and it applies to every tool that we're, we're gonna look at today, which is a cool feature. Um, and the user also has full control over which tools they want to have access to. So once again, we're looking at uh, an example of a home page here, um, and you can see that there is an edit home page tool on there. So um, someone using Communicator 5 could hit edit home page. It will bring them into this section where they, they can then um, rearrange this home page, add and remove tools to it, change what it looks like, change the grid size. But if they hit add page set, from here, they can. you can see on the left-hand side, we've got different categories of tools they might want to add from direct communication, long distance, tools is what we're going to look at today in, in quite a bit more detail. We'll select the Firefox browser from the tools, select add to home page, and Firefox browser has been added there to the home page um, because that's something that they, they want to have access to easily. So at this point, I'd just say it's worth thinking about uh, why is this level of independence and control important um, to our users and also to the people that are supporting them. Um, I've come across when I've been to visit people um, who've been using Communicator for years, they didn't have edit homepage on their homepage. They didn't have settings on their homepage. They didn't know that it was a thing. So it meant that they've just had the same setup for all these years. Um, in some instances, um, and had they had access to settings and edit homepage, they could have been much more independent and been exploring all these other tools and settings that were available to them and it, it made a big difference. Um, so yeah, it's just worth knowing um, if people are familiar with other pieces of software, um, AAC software from other com companies, um, 
do their, do their users have this level of uh, control and independence is the question I would ask. So some of the things we're going to look at today in the do more section of communicator are um, being able to take pictures, organize and play those pictures, playing music, playing games, setting alarms, organizing calendars, uh, giving presentations, uh, using common day-to-day -day apps and websites. Um, we'll also look at um, how our users are accessing Windows in general, so full access to um, computers and laptops, um, and also a little bit on environmental control at the end as well. Any questions, John, or shall we keep going? Nothing in the chat window so far. Lovely. Okay, so you saw when I did edit homepage earlier, I was in the tools section, the tools category of, of things that we could add. Um, and there's some nice features in here, so we'll, we'll, we'll just nip through um, what is available and what you can do in there. So um, one of the features you could have on your homepage is access to a calendar. So we'll click on there and let me just minimize this so everyone can see. You can see we've got a nice accessible calendar here where the user can um, have a general overview of what they've got coming up. They can go on specific dates and see uh, what appointments they've got in for that date. So here we're looking at a, a date in February um, where we've got photography club that we need to get to for, for one o'clock that's in there. Um, you can see we've got nice big accessible buttons to be able to add new appointments into a certain date. You can edit any existing appointments that you've got, delete them out and scroll what's available. We can also scroll through to uh, future and past dates using these tools at the top. Okay, so um, if we go to add an appointment, it takes you to the next page where you can put a description in of what, what you've got going on, choose what the date in uh, start and end dates are and, and set your times and you can see you've got a notify button here to set yourself a reminder as and when that appointment's coming up because uh, in this instance uh, there's a photography club and we're going to need to get the train to Hull to attend that. Uh, you hit tick and that's then saved, uh, this tick in the top right and that then saves into your calendar. Um, so once we're at photography club we want access to our camera so that we can take some pictures. So um, we're going to come into our camera tool from the home page. You can see from here that um, we've got access to our to our camera. Um, most of our device, I think all of our devices now, John, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got front and rear facing cameras. So you've got the ability to switch between those um, from this page and, and take your photographs. And then once you've taken those, there's a section uh, called My Pictures where those can be organized and shown. So you can see once we come in here, any photos that you've taken on our device are stored here. Um, once again, a nice accessible way to be able to show people what we've been up to, show them the photos we've taken, um, add them into slideshows, view them on a larger scale, um, organize them into different folders as well if we're taking lots of different photographs. Um, yeah. One of the first things we looked at was um, adding the Firefox browser to our homepage. Um, this is a really cool uh, feature. Um, it gives a nice, accessible and easy way for our users to access the internet and browse the, the Firefox browser, essentially. So um, if we come to Firefox browser, you can see that uh, Communicator 5 has now been docked down to the bottom of the screen. So this bit here, the black bar with the tools in, this is Communicator 5. And you can see my desktop is now running in the background behind it. So the first thing I want to do is hit the Start Firefox button. And that is going to launch Firefox in the background. And these tools that are in Communicator 5 across the bottom of my page, I'm going to use to control Firefox. Um, so. Um, you can see on the left hand side of this toolbar, we've got two pages of tools available. This is the first page where we can start Firefox, we can dock it, we can go back and forward between websites, refresh pages uh, and minimize pages. 
Uh, we can also jump back into Communicator um, from here. And if we go to our second page, we've got some other tools as well. Um, the ability to scroll the page that we're on, go to our bookmarks, open new tabs. Um, and you can see here we've got type web address. So we hit type web address. It takes us into our Communicator 5 keyboard, which is the universal keyboard. It's the one that we've chosen with all the settings that we want on it. Um, automatically print comes up. I'm going to search for train times because we want to get to our um, photography club and hit confirm in the bottom right hand corner. We then hit go to web address and it puts that straight into Google. Um, and this is the really slick feature I think of, of this tool is the follow links option. So we typed in our um, search and we've now got a choice of uh, links here and the feature that um, works on Firefox is, is a feature called mouseless browsing. And you can see basically what that is, is there are numbered tabs next to every single link on this page and on every page of, of the internet where mouseless browsing is applied. Um, and what that means is we can use this follow links tool to click on anything on this page. So um, if I want to um, check my train times, the link is number 71, as you can see here next to train times. So I click on follow links. I type 71 in using communicate five at the bottom and I click follow that link. And that will take me straight to uh, page 71, which is our, is our check train times. From here, we can carry on using our communicate five um, Firefox page to enter the text of where we want to go and we can navigate our uh, drop downs using these arrows. So the nice thing about that is that, you know, we don't have to be super accurate with our access method to be able to hit all the different links on a page. We've got nice big buttons and communicator uh, and we can use that mouseless browsing to easily navigate uh, whichever website we want to go on essentially. Uh, any questions on either of those, John? Nothing in the chat window at the moment. Okay, cheers. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at um, from our tools is uh, under a tool called text files, my text files. And in here, this is where um, our Communicator 5 users can uh, write longer documents or, or text files. And you can see that our different text files are stored here on the left hand side. And then the body of them is on the right hand side and we can create new files and we can edit existing ones. If we hit the arrow here um, for our photography text file, you can see it opens it out and gives us some additional tools to look at. Uh, one of which, so you can see that we can, we can edit um, our existing file, we can print it out, we can speak the text or, or we can just delete it. Um, but this feature here is pretty slick. This is uh, presentation mode. And if, uh, if our users click on that, what it does is it gives them much more control over being able to speak this text. Um, we've got a lot of users um, who, uh, I know Becky who's on now, um, talks a, a lot using her device to, to um, doing presentations and talking to crowds. And this feature gives a lot of control over doing things like that rather than just having a large body of text where you hit speak and it just speaks the whole thing, um, you can put a lot more emphasis on different elements of your talk or time it better or read the crowd better using some of the tools in here. So you can see that um, from here we can uh, just speak the text if we want and we've got the ability to stop it, but we can also jump to different paragraphs or different lines within our text and speak them individually which means that we can repeat them. And as I say, we can, we can wait before we say the, ne the next bit of our presentation. And the next bit we're gonna look at are some of the common apps that we can access using Communicator 5. So once again, from our homepage, in this instance, we've got text messaging available. And if we come into text messaging, um, one of the nice things with this is that it, it syncs with your phone. It does need to be a, a, an Android phone. It doesn't work with iPhones, but if you have an Android phone, um, it will sync with it. So all the texts that are on your phone will show up in Communicator 5. So you can see we've got our various conversations here down the left, and we can choose to 
reply to those. We've also got the ability to check our connection with our phone. It's really easy to set up. You just link it up via Bluetooth, essentially. Um, and what we can do is we can hit new message, which will take us to this section where we can choose who we're sending the text to. And once again, using the keyboard that we set originally, we can type the body of our text in here and then hit send. Another tool that um, a lot of our users make um, good use of in Communicate 5 is, is access to email. Um, and the key point um, with, with email in Communicate 5 specifically is that you have access to view and save all attachment types, which is quite a unique feature for AAC software. So if you receive an attachment, you can save it yourself to anywhere on your device and similarly if you have attachments you want to send you can find them from anywhere on your device uh, and, and send those through to your contacts. So uh, as I say um, I don't know of any other AAC software that gives this level of um, access to, to, to the attachment element of email. Uh, let me know if, if you know of any others. So we come into email um, you can see here we've got uh, an email from Molly we're going to expand our email out because you can see that there's an attachment from Molly on this email. So if we then go to our attachments button, you can see that Molly sent an image through. And from there, we can choose to just open that and have a look at it, or we can choose to save it somewhere on our device. So if we hit save, um, this is the key feature really. It brings us into an accessible version of our file browser on our device which means we can choose using eye gaze or switch or whatever our access method is where we want to save that document to. So in this instance, we're going to look at pictures because that's where we're going to save it to uh, or documents. And that email has now been saved uh, there. Um, similarly, if we are then replying to Molly, we can hit on reply and you can add other recipients into the email. You can type your message. And once again, you can go to attachments using the kind of uh, pay-per-click icon at the bottom. We're going to add an attachment. And once again, we're in our accessible file browser where we can choose any uh, attachment type you want, whether it's documents, videos, pictures, and attach them to that email. So in this instance, Molly was saying she's hungry, what we have for dinner, and we can send um, a menu over for the takeaway that we're going to be having later tonight. So we look at the menu from our uh, menus folder, hit the tick, that's then attached and it's sent over to Molly. So yeah, really nice, easy way to be able to manage your emails, send receive emails and also send and receive attachments of any type. Um, any questions on that, John? Nothing through on the chat window. Okay, lovely. All right, so the next bit is um, commonly used apps. Um, and the example we're going to look at quickly here is for Facebook. So what we've done here is we've come into the Facebook app or page set that we've got from our homepage. And you can see uh, Communicate 5 is now available down the left-hand side of the screen. These are all our Communicate 5 buttons. And this is our Facebook page. And we're going to use our buttons on the side to uh, be able to navigate Facebook. So you can see that we can um, update our status, we can scroll through, we can uh, like posts. We've got our mouseless browsing feature here as well. So if we want to click on anything on the page, if we're using Firefox, we can use that here. So essentially, we've got nice big accessible buttons that allow us to um, access a lot of our commonly used apps. Um, we're actually going to be running another webinar, which we'll be announcing, I think, later today. Um, and I think we'll be running at some point next week where we're going to go into a lot more detail about um, the different app access that we have available and some of the key features of them because we can go into a lot of detail about all the different things that, that we can do with these. All right, so they are some of the commonly used tools and apps within Communicator 5. Um, and this bit's kind of the trickiest bit for me to kind of explain and get across, but um, the thing that's really nice about those apps and the, the kind of considerations when 
we're talking to our users about using the Communicator 5 tools are that they are great because you're staying in the one program. So it reduces navigation. You've always got the same keyboard as we've touched on and the same settings. You've got large accessible buttons for doing your everyday tasks. So it reduces strain uh, if you are using, you know, eye gaze or switching for your access method. Um, and all the buttons that we've shown you today are editable. So you can make them bigger. You can change their location. You can add new functions to them. Um, so it's a consistent and familiar layout. It's simple and easy to use. We can accommodate users who are perhaps less accurate with their access method by giving them the larger buttons. Um, they've always got access to a keyboard nearby within Communicator as they can jump to their keyboard page easily. Um, but it is worth bearing in mind that they are, anyone who's using these Communicator tools are limited to the programs that we've created tools for in Communicator 5. So what, what I mean by that is that if, you know, we have to have created pages within Communicator 5 for um, Facebook and these other pages to make them accessible. Um, and where we do have pages for those websites, there may be limited features available because we can't always have a button for every possible action that can be performed on that website. So this is where it's good to think about having a different choice of tools available to our users. And I think this is something that Communicator 5 does really well. So the tools we've looked at so far have been what, within what we call um, a safe environment. We're within the Communicator 5 architecture, wherever, say, everything's familiar and easy to access. Um, and because Communicator 5 is our software and it's built by us, um, access has been taken into account and it's, it's been designed with that in mind. So you've seen so far that everything is easy to click on and navigate regardless of access method. Um, which is great for lots of tasks, lots of everyday tasks like we've looked at is perfect for, and it's what most of our users use most of the time. Um, however, if someone was to only use Communicator 5, it would limit the user in terms of what they have access to, because we don't have ready-made page sets in Communicator 5 for every possible program that a user might want to use. Um, as an example, if uh, someone was studying media at university, they might have really specific software on their computers at university that they might want to access, and we're not going to have Communicate 5 pages built for them to be able to do that. So it's worth thinking about how a student might access that software. Um, someone might want us to play Minecraft, <laughs> uh, and we don't have a Minecraft page set, so we need to think about how someone might do that. So this is where a choice of tools comes in, comes in handy, and that's what we're going to kind of look at next. So we have to consider different ways or the best ways for our users to access Windows. And we've already looked at uh, the kind of the way through Communicator 5 to do that, which is through our, our homepage um, apps. They're great for commonly used programs, but there is a second option available for our users, which is to use um, computer control, which is essentially where we can uh, emulate a mouse and a keyboard using eye gaze or using a switch, which is what we're going to briefly look at next. Um, so just some of the considerations of, of why we might look at computer control or computer access is that it gives our users the ability to access absolutely anything using their access method, which gives increased independence and flexibility. The user has uh, does need to have a high level of control of their access method, so they have to be quite accurate, essentially. Um, if we start looking at computer control, it is a new layout and a different piece of software that, that the user um, has to learn. Um, but the user can come out of Communicator 5 really easily to jump into computer control and then be able to easily jump back into their communication software if they need to use their text-to-speech keyboard or other tools. So what does that look like? Hopefully that makes sense so far. Um, essentially, we can be in Communicator 5 using our ready-made tools that are easy to access for a lot of everyday tasks. But if there's something that we need to access that isn't available in Communicator 5, we can use tools like this from our homepage, Go to Desktop. So if we hit Go to Desktop, it takes us out of Communicator 5, which is now docked to these three small buttons over here. And we now have access to everything on our computer by launching Windows Control. So if I hit that button, that's now gonna open computer control for me. And computer control, as I say, is uh, the ability for our users to 
uh, have uh, access to essentially a keyboard and a mouse using their eyes or a switch. In this instance, we're using eye gaze and we're using computer control to be able to look around the screen and choose to single click on things, double click on things, right click. This one's for scrolling the page. We can drag and drop, we can zoom in and we can type into our website from here. Um, once we've done that, we can then hit the cross and jump back into Communicate 5. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video of that because it makes more sense when you actually see it in action than it does from looking at, looking at a picture. So this is a video of me. Uh, John says it's a bit inception-y um, because I am using computer control. I've come out of Communicator, I've launched computer control, and um, to put this video together, I was using a piece of video editing software. So this is a video of me using computer control to um, use that video editing software to create this video. Um, and I'll, I'll talk you through what's going on. Um, I didn't realize how loud my dog was snoring when I made this video, so please excuse the noise in the background. And hopefully we can hear it okay. All right, so here I am in Communicator 5, and I'm typing um, using my keyboard my message. So you can see uh, these are some of the features John touches on say, in the Say It Quicker webinar. But you can see I'm using my word and, and phrase prediction here. And I wanted to add using the video editing software, that arrow to show that my dwell time is going slower on the phrase prediction. And I did that using video editing software and I actually used eye gaze with computer control to add that onto this um, video. I also um, used it to cut the video down to just show you the bits that I want. So I'm then going to come out of my keyboard and launch computer control. And you can see it's now took me out of Communicator 5 and I'm now using computer control. So I'm looking at um, Camtasia is a software and I've clicked on single click and I want to cut the start of the video. So to do that, I have to single click on a tiny little red button there, which I have to drag along. So you'll see that I've, clicked to the point that I want to cut the video to. I've now got to drag the red icon. So I'm going to zoom in on the icon and click on it with my eyes. Then use drag and drop to drag it over to the point that I want to cut the video to. And then hit cut. So I'm looking at the cut tool selecting that with a single click and I've now cut the start of the video to the starting point that I want. And then here I'm going to add that arrow into the point where I want. So I'm going to look at the uh, different tools and I'm going to click on the arrow that I want to add in. So I'm clicking on single click, uh, sorry, I'm clicking on drag and drop there. And you can see I'm looking down at the time where I want that arrow to appear on the video. And then I'm also going to look at where I want to place it on the actual video itself which is right next to the word computer. Now at the moment, the arrow is really small. You can't really see it very well. So I'm looking for a tool to make it bigger. And then I just noticed that there's a properties button there on the right. So I'm going to look at that, single click on it. Once I've zoomed in. And I've now got a sliding scale to change the size of the arrow that I've just placed. So I'm going to zoom in on that scale. And click it. I've just made the arrow a bit too big. So I'm going to go back to the scale. And I want it about half the size. So I'm going to move that down. And now I've got the arrow the size that I want. So the reason I wanted to show that video was just to show that, um, you know, um, the tools we've looked at can get five are amazing and will we'll do the job for most things. However, there's lots of things that our users want to be able to do 
where we don't have pages for in Communicator 5, such as um, you know, playing certain games or using certain software. So having computer control available means that they can literally access anything because you can single click. Joe, so I think a, a great example of that came in the chat window just now. Uh, so Alison was asking um, whether or not we had a page set ready for Zoom. You know, obviously the tool that we're using now and being able to mute and turn your video on and off. Uh, I've answered the question in the chat window in that um, there is one in development and kind of watch this space. But it's a great example of what you're talking about. Like we've got paid sets for certain things and it might be that you've got an app that we haven't got a paid set for. So it is important to have a choice of tools and the ability to go out to Windows using computer control or Windows control like you've just demonstrated. Definitely, yeah. Thank you for that. And and I mean, I'd not even heard of Zoom until the lockdown happened, and all of a sudden, exactly. that's the tool, that was the tool <laughs> everyone was using. It may well be that in a month's time, it's something else, and we're going to be uh, way, way, we, you know, it's going to take us time to develop things for that. Um, I've actually had a look at the Zoom one that's, that we've got coming, and it's awesome. Um, but it does it does take a little bit of time. So if you want to be kind of up to date of access to everything uh, that's on trend, then um, having computer control is, is a great option. But you can see that it is it is more, it does take more control over your access methods. You do need to be able to be more accurate. It's not as simple to use. So um, I suppose that brings us on nicely to this slide, which is that with, with Communicator 5, we've got one system there that can cater to many needs. Um, some users may just use the Communicator 5 tools, which is great. They're just texting, they're just scrolling and liking on Facebook. They're not wanting to do some of the more, the things that more computer literate people might want to be able to do. Um, that's great. Um, some users might switch between the two options depending on what they're accessing. So for Facebook, they just like to scroll and like, um, but they also want access to some other programs. Um, they'll switch between the two. Uh, it also might depend on how they're feeling at the time. If, if they're tired and their accuracy is off a little bit, then using the Communicator 5 version of Facebook might be easier for them than using computer control on the actual communicate, uh, com Facebook web, web page. Sorry. So Communicator 5 combined with computer control allows the user to have full control of how their system works best for them at any given time and depending on what suits their needs and what it is that they're accessing in that moment. Thank you for the, the question. Okay, so kind of following on from the um, different page sets and apps that are in Communicator 5 and whether we've got up-to-date ones for everything, it is worth knowing that we have um, an element on our website called Page Set Central, where we have lots of other um, Communicator 5 tools and page sets that you can download from our website that aren't just in the software already. Um, basically, they've come about because we've got members of our team, we've got AAC users and AAC professionals who have a really good understanding of how the programming in Communicator 5 works, essentially. And they've created their own Communicator 5 page sets because they might have a family member or a client or they have a general interest in a, in a, in a, in a tool and they want to make a page so that our C5 Communicator 5 users can access it. So they make the pages and they upload them to Page Set Central. And that means that our users can then download those and we can share them and make them available to other people who might find them useful. Um, a great example of this, um, I will show you now, this is my favorite one, but this is what Page Set Central looks like. Um, it's, uh, as I say, it's in the My Toby Dynavox uh, part of our website where anyone can make an account for. And you come to Page Set Central and you can see on the left hand side, you can search for the different type of pages that you, you might, uh, might be looking for. In this instance, we were looking to see if there's any that have been made for Google. So you can see we've got different filters down the side, depending on what software you want to use. And um, there's filters, whoops, for languages in there as well. Um, and in this instance, we were looking for one for Google Home, which has come up on the right hand side. So it gives you a brief description that it's a sample page she used for Hey Google commands for Google Home. Um, if that's something I want, I can choose to add it to my stuff and download it. And once it's downloaded to my computer, 
I can go to edit homepage from my communicate five homepage, add a page set. And where before we were getting all of our tools from this section, the text communication section, any time that I download a page or I edit a page or create my own page in communicate five, it's going to be in this section here, my page sets. And in this instance, we, uh, the one I wanted to show you was a page set that someone made to give control over Kindle so that our users can, can read uh, books on their devices. And I think it's a, a really slick example of some of the stuff that some, some people have made. Um, just while we're on this bit, you can see that you have got the ability to put uh, other Toby Dynavox applications on your homepage to launch. And once again, access to that accessible file browser means you can literally launch any application or file from your Communicate 5 homepage as well. Just worth noting that that's on there. Um, but in this instance, we're going to my page sets. And we've downloaded the Kindle page set from uh, page set central. So we're going to add that to our homepage. And you can see that that's now available there. When we then go into the Kindle page, uh, like the Facebook uh, page um, that we looked at before, Communicate 5 is here on the right hand side with different uh, large accessible buttons which are going to control our Kindle website or our Kindle app, uh, Windows app, which is here on the left. So you can see within, it's launched the Kindle app for us when we've gone into the web page and here's all of our various books listed and we can scroll through our library to choose the book that we want to read. We can dock this uh, Kindle window. We can dock the Communicate 5 window so we can see more of the page. We've got arrows to navigate through our different books and sections of the website. We can choose our book and you can see then from here, we've got the ability to read the book and, and you've got your arrows on the bottom to turn the page, etc. So yeah, quite a nice example of a page that someone's made and uploaded to um, our website. We mentioned right at the start about the, um, oh, sorry, any questions on page at Central, John? Uh, I've answered a, a one, but don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. So we mentioned at the start, the ability for um, the user to have full control over their settings. And um, we were talking about the fact that, um, you know, a lot of our users, they don't just stick with the same access method all the time. Um, you know, they may be using eye gaze, um, because they're at home, but they're out and about and it's quite a sunny day. Eye gaze isn't going to work for them. So they may have to switch to you know, using a switch. Um, or if they get tired and it's hard for them to uh, keep focus with their eye gaze, they might switch to, to switching. Um, there's lots of different scenarios where, where someone might want to change their, their access method on the fly. Um, and our users can do that themselves from their homepage, either by going into settings or you can actually add uh, pages on your homepage to go into the specific settings. So if it's something you change um, a lot, then it, it saves an extra step. You can just quickly jump into a specific setting. So in this case, input method, we're currently set to gaze interaction, but we're going to change that to switch scanning instead. And we're now switch scanning within communicate to five. Um, and I re the reason I wanted to show you this bit is because um, when we came out of Communicator 5 before with the go to desktop computer control tool, that was for an eye gaze user. Um, but it's worth thinking about how our switch users are going to be able to uh, navigate the desktop if they come out of um, Communicator 5. And one of the things that's quite cool is when we make that change from eye gaze to switch, it automatically changes how we're going to access Windows as well without the user having to do anything else. So I've changed to uh, switch scanning. I've come back to my home page and now if I use my switch to select the go to desktop with keyboard icon it looks very similar in that we've got our um, communicate 5 docked in the bottom right of the screen but now when we launch Windows control it's going to launch this tool which looks different to uh, the computer control tool we looked at before because this is how our switch users um, are going to access the desktop using uh, mouse emulation with a switch so um, these are the different options that we've got. Um, the first one is um, a linear scanning across the desktop. 
Um, the second one over here is what we call radar mouse. Um, basically, the rather than scanning linearly, linearly across the page, sorry, um, it goes around in a circle um, from kind of 12 degrees round, and the user hits the switch to stop the scan uh, when it's on the thing you want. They've then got a tool to be able to move these tools around. You can then decide what function you want to perform once you've um, scanned onto the icon. So just to give you an example, if we choose this first option, which is the kind of linear scan, we can have it so that we quadrant scan the page first. So you can see we've got our top left quadrant here, um, which is where we want to be scanning. The, tool, the icon that I want is the quarterly report here. So this is the area of the screen that I want to access. So I hit my switch. I now have my horizontal scan bar, which will come down the page. And once it lines up with the quarterly report, I hit my switch again. I'll then get the vertical line running along that. And once that line gets to the icon I want, I hit my switch and decide what function I want to perform. Um, the radar mouse works in the same way in that you choose the um, quadrant that you want. But this time, rather than having a horizontal line, the line, as I say, will start at 12 o'clock and rotate round. I want to get that board make a plus one. So as soon as it lines up with that, I hit my switch hit it when the vertical line reaches and then choose what function I want to perform, whether it's a single click or a right click or a drag and drop, like we were doing with eye gaze before in computer control. So yeah, just worth, worth knowing really simple change for the user is uh, just changing their access method one time in the settings, but it makes changes across not just communicator five, but also to how they can access their desktop. And then lastly, we'll have a quick look at um, how the user can take control of their environment. Um, we've got loads of infrared remote controls uh, layouts built into Communicator 5, and most of our devices have got infrared emitters built into them, which means that our users can control their TVs, radios, DVDs, um, certain uh, features within the home, like curtains and lights and things like that. Um, and as we looked at before, um, another kind of great thing about where technology has gone is, is that we can take advantage of a lot of the voice control um, tools that are out there now, like Siri and Google Home and Amazon Echo, and we have a lot of pages now available for those too. So where we came to edit our homepage before, this time you can see we've scrolled down our tools and we've come to our infrared remote settings and we're gonna choose which remotes we wanna have access to. We've got different layouts, depending on whether you want a full remote, or maybe someone just wants to be able to change the volume and the channel and turn the TV on and off, you can have a more simple remote here. This time we're gonna select a full remote though, and here we've got the layout ready to go so that the um, buttons with a red square are ready to be programmed with an infrared code. So all you would do is select the button that you want to program by pressing it, Communicator 5 will then let you know that there's no infrared command, but we can add one. You select yes, and you literally aim the remote control into the infrared receiver on your device, fire it in and record the code. And now that button will um, send that code out from your AAC device. So a quick summary of the things that we've looked at. You've seen how Communicator 5 allows us to take pictures browse those and um, we didn't really look at music too much um, but that is going to be covered in our accessible um, app webinar that as I say we're going to launch where we're going to go into more detail about things like Spotify, Netflix, Instagram, Facebook etc. Um, there are some games in there but a lot of the games um, you will need to take advantage of uh, some of the other Windows access tools that we looked at we can set alarms, organize calendars, do presentations using our text files, access common apps, full Windows control, and we've got some environmental control tools in there as well. So in terms of Communicator 5 and supporting text users, um, we're doing a, we, we basically, we, before the lockdown, we were doing a full day's training on Communicator 5, and these were the kind of different modules that we were doing on the day. Um, say it quicker 
which uh, John's got a great webinar on, which shows some of the features and tools that allow for efficient communication within um, Communicate 5 within the keyboard specifically. And um, today we've looked at the do more uh, and taking control sections. Um, but we're also going to be doing webinars um, that go into more detail about the accessible apps, um, about personalizing Communicate 5 and looking at voice options, um, also about how we can support change uh, within Communicate 5. Uh, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. We're going to be advertising um, dates for webinars covering some of the other, the other elements of the software. Um, for anyone who also um, supports with uh, users using or um, is familiar with Boardmaker, which is another product of ours, or Snap Core First, which is the symbol software I mentioned at the start, we've got webinars coming on all of those too. Um, we will be sending this PowerPoint out, so this link will be on there. Um, and this will link you through to be able to um, see what dates and times webinars for the other uh, topics are going to be. If you're not following us on Facebook, um, we've got some really nice community Facebook groups where users post um, a lot of helpful tips and uh, advice and just experience that they're having with our, with our devices and software. And it's worth knowing that um, you can book us in to do more personalized kind of specific training if you want us to go and dig a little bit deeper into any of the stuff we've looked at today or in any of the other webinars or if you want your, the rest of your team to be familiar with any of the stuff that we're touching on, um, feel free to get in touch and we can offer webinars for, for uh, teams. Um, there are software trials available. We're gonna send you the link to a professional account um, and we are still doing device assessments. We're all still working. Um, I just set a device up for somebody today. So we're doing them remotely essentially. We will post the device out to somebody once it's available. Um, and then we will set everything up remotely with them using like a FaceTime call and, and remote access to the device. And they've been going really well. So um, if there are people who, who would like an assessment uh, of, uh, of an eye gaze device or any of our other AAC devices, please do let us know. Um, we've got a team of local account managers, as I say, myself and John are on today, but we've got a whole, whole team of us and we are all still available and working. So please feel free to get in touch. So yeah, that's the end of that presentation. Um, and we've got a couple of minutes left if, if there are any questions. Oh, are you there, John? Okay, well, um, it doesn't sound like there's any questions. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for for attending. If anything does come up, as I say, do, do feel free to get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. And if there's anything else we can help with, uh, let us know. And thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Cheers, everyone.